The 4th of July had always been my favorite holiday. The smell of barbecue, the sound of laughter, and the sight of fireworks lighting up the night sky. It all felt like a celebration of life and freedom. It was like any other Independence Day. The sun was high in the sky, and the air was filled with the scent of grilled meat. I could hear children's laughter as they played with sparklers. My friends and I had planned to drive out to the old abandoned fairground on the edge of town. It was a place of local legend, said to be haunted by the ghosts of those who had died in a tragic accident decades ago. We thought it would be fun to spend the night there before watching the fireworks to give ourselves a little scare. The air was thick with the humidity and decaying wood. The place felt forgotten, lost to time. We parked the car and stepped out. Are you sure this is a good idea? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Come on, it's just for fun, my friend Mike said, grinning. What's the worst that could happen? We traveled deeper into the fairground, past rusted rides and broken down stalls. The atmosphere grew heavier, the air colder. My skin prickled with unease, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. The sky began to darken, the sun started setting. As we explored, I caught a whiff of something foul, like rotting garbage. I wrinkled my nose, trying to ignore the nauseating smell. We found the old Ferris wheel, its metal frame creaking in the wind. Suddenly, a chill ran down my spine, and I felt an overwhelming urge to leave. We should go, I said, my voice trembling. Before anyone could respond, a loud crash echoed through the air, followed by a series of drunken shouts. At first, I thought it was fireworks, but the sound was too close, too aggressive. Then, the screaming started. My heart pounded in my chest as I turned to see a figure stumbling out of the shadows, a man with wild eyes and a bottle in his hand. Panic surged through me, and I instinctively ducked behind a nearby stall. The air was thick with the acrid smell of alcohol, mixing with the sickly sweet scent of decay. We need to get out of here, I shouted, my voice barely audible over the chaos. My friends scattered, running in all directions. I could hear their frantic footsteps, their desperate cries. The drunkard's laughter echoed through the fairground, a chilling sound that sent shivers down my spine. I crawled on my hands and knees, trying to stay hidden, my breath coming in short, sharp gasps. As I made my way towards the exit, I stumbled upon Mike, crouching behind a cotton candy cart. My stomach churned, and I felt bile rise in my throat. I wanted to scream, to cry, but there was no time. I had to keep moving. The smell of smoke filled the air as fires broke out around us, the dry wood of the old structures catching quickly. I could see the flicker of flames, feel the intense heat on my skin. My eyes stung with smoke, and I struggled to breathe coughing as I stumbled forward. I found myself at the edge of the fairground near the entrance. I could hear sirens in the distance growing louder. Relief washed over me, but it was quickly replaced by a new fear. The drunk man was still out there, and I wasn't safe yet. I ducked behind a ticket booth, my heart pounding in my chest. The smell of burnt popcorn and hot metal filled my nostrils. I peered out trying to see where the drunkard was, but the smoke and darkness made it difficult. Suddenly he appeared just a few feet away. His eyes were wild, his face twisted in a maniacal grin. He raised his bottle, slurring curses and threats. Time seemed to slow down, and I felt a cold wave of dread wash over me. In that moment the first firework of the night exploded in the sky, a brilliant burst of red, white, and blue. The drunkard's attention shifted for a split second, distracted by the noise and light. I seized the opportunity, bolting from my hiding place and running towards the flashing lights of the approaching police cars. Help! Over here! I screamed, waving my arms frantically. The officers saw me and rushed forward, their shouts blending with the crackle of fireworks and the roar of flames. They apprehended the drunk man his crazed laughter turning into incoherent mumbling. As they led him away, I collapsed to the ground, 
my body trembling with relief and exhaustion. The rest of the night passed in a blur. My friends were found and taken to the hospital, some shaken but thankfully uninjured. The fairground was a smoldering ruin, the smell of burnt wood and scorched earth lingering in the air. As I stood there watching the final firework burst into a dazzling display of red, white, and blue, and I felt a surge of pride swell in my chest. We had faced a nightmare and come out the other side. In that moment, I knew that no matter what horrors we might face, the spirit of freedom and resilience that defined our nation 